All right, so let me tell you guys what I am so excited for this video right here. Number one, totally off topic, but I'm just feeling good in the new setup finally, right? The first few videos, I think this is my fourth video, or whatever. I was pretty nervous in the first ones. Again, new setup. I'm standing up now and everything, new lights. Everything's just new. I felt like I was at a new job, you know? But anyways, getting back into the job of things here. But even other than that, the comparison we're gonna be doing today is just such a good comparison. Talking about the new Xbox wireless gaming headset, compared to the Razer Kyra Pro gaming headset here. You all know this has been my favorite Xbox headset. And this one just recently released and got an absolutely raving review. I love it. So again, two amazing headsets. And the coolest thing about it is during the video of the Xbox wireless headset, so many of you guys asked, hey man, how about versus the Kyra Pro? Are they better than the Kyra Pro? And I was like, man, you know, it's so funny that all you guys have been asking that because even when I was doing my initial review, of the Xbox wireless headset, I was testing these with them. I was like, all right, like, what's going on here, right? Because I love them both so much. So even during my initial test of that, I was doing that there. So again, some of you that are new here to some of my comparisons, I do so many headset comparisons. Subscribe, hit the bell for those as well, you know? But what I do, I don't revert back to my original review. I don't just go watch those videos. Hey, let me touch on this, this, and this. I actually pull them out test them again, even compared to my initial first review. And that's what I'm doing right here, busting them out, test them on all my platforms and everything, give you a fresh mic test and all that, and I'll give you my honest take right there. But again, two of the best Xbox headsets right here. This is like the ultimate boxing match, right? Like Xbox boxing, you get it? So again, two great headsets, it's gonna be hard to pick, but I will pick one at the end. All right, so where do we start with these two headsets? I mean, there's just so many good things within both of them. So where can we start? Like, come on, who are you kidding? Where are we gonna start? You know, in every headset video or comparison, we gotta start with comfort, because if it's not stinking cozy, we're gonna take them right off, no matter how good of a deal they are, or how great they sound, or the features. So just looking at both headsets straight up right here, you can see there's a lot of differences within comfort. Number one, looking at the Razer, you see you got the nice sports material ear cushion right there, pleather line on the inside, plenty big, plenty deep right there, very nice, soft and plush. Headband up there, just that little middle part, which is plenty fine right there again even me with the bald head very cozy again you have that cloth mesh material up there very nice soft and breathable they can look at the ear cups in the headband on the xbox one they're completely pleather inside and out same with the headband there so yes your ears can get a little bit more spicy on these guys but they are still very very plush right here incredibly plush actually but yes these ear cushions are slightly shorter than the ones on the Kyra Pro. My ears don't get pinched in either of them, but again, they're just an absolute pinch smaller than the Razer ones. Now, other than fabrics and ear cushions and stuff, the other thing that you can clearly see right here is that swivel. Take a look at the Razers. They're completely flat, completely open. On the Xbox ones, they do not swivel like that. So again, looking at the Razers, they go in and out and everything. Ear cups go in and out, and then you got that adjustable clicky arm right there with some numbers letting you know where you are. Very firm, holds this position, but again, the razors have that complete swivel right there. Coming over to the Xbox, the ear cups go up and down a little bit, but that's it. No in and out swivel. Very nice firm adjustments on the ear cups right or on the headband right there. And again, they hold their position as well and adjust plenty well. So when we look at that and we talk about the razor having all that swivel, like the reason I love swivel, you all know my headset videos, I always rave about swivel, right? Because it's nice because you're not going to get a pressure point up here or a pressure point in the back. If you're wearing glasses, right? It just kind of forms around it, right? Maybe your head doesn't swoop in as back as much as mine and it'll come forward a little bit. That swivel, what it does is it helps it conform around your head, whatever head shape you have. I love swivel in my headsets. But shockingly, with the Xbox One, like, again, I was kind of like, man, no swivel, that's gonna be a real stinker. But when you put this guy on right here, the ear cups are so stinking plush. Like, I can't stress it enough. These guys are like soft, memory foam like they're so nice and again they just really conform they conform right around my glasses onto the back of my head they hold that position i'm not getting that pressure point up front like i usually get with like uh, the logitech g pro headset or the hyper x headsets y'all hear me say a lot i get that pressure point up there i do not get that with the xbox headset so really cool again i can't go on enough these ear cushions are super plush on this guy but hey even though both of them are great and i'm sitting here talking about them hey they're both incredibly comfy we still got to pick a winner for each class, right? And for comfort, 
I have to give it to the Razer one, just because again, it has those options there. Now again, I want, I want to stress this enough here. Like I'm saying they're both great. I'm saying they're fantastic. I'm still going to pick a winner, but that's not me saying the other one's bad, if you catch my drift right there. But yeah, as far as comfort, out the box package, I got to give it to the Razer here. Next up, let's go and talk about the build of both headsets. They are both pretty much completely plastic, minus their metal reinforced headband. Same with the Xbox up inside here, metal reinforced, and then on the Razer metal reinforced as well. But other than that, both are plastic. Both are very lightweight. You don't feel them like really hanging or pressing down on your head. Again, myself with a bald head, they're both very comfortable right there, you know? But the Razer, again, talking about it having that swivel, you got a lot of moving parts right here, a lot of different connections, right? Whether it be the headband going into here, here, then that bracket going into there to give it to that swivel then into the ear cups and everything right so you got a lot of adjustability right there on the xbox again you got that in and out a little bit and then up into the arms and all the plastic here is just very thick on this xbox headset i don't get worried twisting bending this guy up or anything like that same with the razor one i don't get really it's a little firmer but i don't get worried with it at all but again we got to pick a winner and i got to give it to the xbox one because it just feels a little bit more solid, there's not as many pressure points as the Razer. Again, with that swivel, you got multiple different spots that could potentially break, that more than likely won't break, but you do have more connections right there. The Xbox, just again, that one solid piece. By the way, if any of you are wondering, you're probably wondering whenever I stretch that headset out and you hear that little clicking right there, all that is, that's the headband right here, disconnecting from the plastic when I stretch it super far. Again, it just snaps out. And whenever I close it back, it snaps back in, just if you're curious. All right, so now let's get into features, functions, and actually using the headsets. Obviously, both of these headsets are Xbox headsets, so that's our primary use. But yes, you can use them on PC as well. If you buy the little Xbox dongle separately, I believe it's like 25 bucks, slap it in your PC, and it pairs up just like that. But yes, both of these headsets can also be paired up via Bluetooth. Now, of course, you don't really want to like watch movies and videos and game with just Bluetooth, because any Bluetooth device, you're going to get a very slight delay. Some of you may not notice it. I notice it clear as day. You know, again, it's just that very slight delay with both of these. But again, you do get that option there. Great for music listening and stuff. But again, primarily Xbox. And looking at the features of both of these headsets, talking about the back of the Razer one, you have your Xbox pair button. Same as like a controller. Hold it down, hold it on your Xbox, bam, you pair up. You have your game to chat volume adjust right back there. And then right below that, you have your Bluetooth pairing button. Flopping over to the back left ear cup, you have mic mute, mic active, volume up and down, nice clicks in there. And then you have your power button, USB-C charging, and then your microphone port. Now taking a look at the Xbox headset, on the back right ear cup, you have your USB-C charging. Back left ear cup, you have your pairing button, but that is also your Bluetooth button, right? So you're going to hold it down right there, just again, like pairing a controller on the Xbox, and then hold it down a little bit longer, and you'll be able to pair it to, again, a phone, a tablet, whatever Bluetooth device you want right there. Right below that, you have your attached microphone with your mic mute button. Now, the great thing, the coolest thing I love about the Xbox headset is both these ear cups on the side. The right one is your volume up and down right there, and on the left one is your game to chat adjustment. In the middle of that one, you have a little click to let you know you are halfway. I just love the innovation and creativity of having those volume dials on the side of the ear cups. So after looking over those features and functions of both headsets, they're quite similar, right? They both have the same features and functions. They're just laid out a little bit different. Being a tech nerd myself, you know, I love these ear cup dials. As cheesy as it sounds, it, it, it sells me, right? I love it. I think it's so cool, the innovation. It works great whenever you're gaming. Bam, right there. And I've got to look for a little wheel on the bottom of the headset. I absolutely love it. But on a Razer one, you got a detachable microphone. It's real cool if you never use it, you know what I mean? It's not in your way, but the Xbox one tucks up aside here. We'll get that mic test here in a shortly, by the way. But um, you got the Xbox pair, you got the Bluetooth pair. Over here, you got to hold it down. So I feel like the Xbox one really made it quite simple. You don't got all these buttons and dials like the Kyra ones and everything, you know? Um, it's a little more simple. You know, bam, I got my volume over here. I got my game to chat over here. I love it. And as you can tell, Picking the winner as far as features and functions, they both pack all the features and functions, which is great again, it's fantastic, but I love the simplicity and the innovation of the Xbox. So as far as that, I gotta give the win to the Xbox headset. So, so far everything's been fairly on par, right? As far as comfort, both incredibly cozy, slight differences. As far as features and functions, they're both packing the exact same, 
Just again, slight differences. But I, what we're gonna talk about here is gonna be the second biggest thing I believe within both headsets that's gonna separate them, and that is gonna be the sound, right? So talking about the Razer Kyber Pro, they're using the Razer Triforce drivers, 50 millimeter with a frequency range of 20 to 20,000. Coming over here to the Xbox, you have 40 millimeter drivers with a frequency range of 20 to 20,000. So you might be thinking, hmm, really the only difference is the 50 to 40, they both got the same frequency range and everything, right? But the Razer Triforce drivers are so cool. It's the same ones they use in the Black Sharks, Black Shark V2 Pros, all of them right there, right? And it's such a great driver because being Triforce, they let the bass, the mids, and the highs really breathe and kind of perform on their own. And you get that over here. It's clear. It's very nice and clear, very detailed, definitely more prominent in the highs, definitely over here. A lot more highs than bass. You still have bass, but again, it's not very boomy. It's not very full right again it's more high pitched than bass opposite coming over here to the xbox one being 40 millimeter drives with the 20 to 20. it's definitely a lot more full bodied sound a lot more bass now again when i say more bass don't take it as this ear shaking rumbly muddy bass that's just going to ruin your game a grenade goes off and it's in your ears it's not that by any means but again it's definitely a warmer sound definitely full of bass like clear as day putting one onto the other they're almost like complete opposites in sound right there. Again, this definitely has more full bass. This has more highs. And, and how I put this, like I tested on multiple games, Call of Duty on PC primarily and on Xbox primarily uh, playing Dirt 5. And Dirt 5, I think, is, has been one of my favorite games to test headsets on these days. There's just so many different sound variations in it. So many different surfaces you're driving across. There would be dirt, rocks spitting up. You got the water, you got the mud, you got the concrete tires squealing right on all those different surfaces, the exhaust popping and everything, the engine squealing, the crowd yelling, the environment. There's so much going on and it really pulls everything out of the headset. So talking about playing that game, by the way, if you have a Game Pass, trust me, download that game, it's such a blast. Anyways, I got totally off on a Dirt 5 tangent there, right? So talking about that game, and it really was different with each headset, like very different. So let's talk about me using the uh, Kyra Pro here. So I'm playing Dirt 5 and the exhaust is just you know, like a rally game. I try to imitate, pop, 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 pop. that's how the exhaust sounds, you know, it's really poppy. And then the tire squeal, and then you got the crowd cheering. It was so high pitched in these guys. It was very high pitched, it sounded good. Right, so don't take that, like the dirt just going up into the wheel wells of the car. It sounded very good in detail, but sometimes piercing right a little bit high pitched right there coming over to the xbox one playing dirt five it was definitely more or less you felt like you were sitting in a car a lot more deeper you, you almost felt that engine right there you know what i mean and then the crowd was toned down a little bit the dirt was a little bit heavier if you catch my drift you got more bass right there so again with something like that i really enjoyed the xbox headset a lot more where i wanted a little more of a warmer sound now, totally opposite going over to Call of Duty, right? When I play competitive games, I judge my footsteps off the highs. I don't know if you judge yours off the low end, but with the highs, you can hear a reload around a corner or something like that. You know what I mean? You can really hear that person with a suppressor on which direction they're coming from. And that's what I got with the Kyras, right? Playing Call of Duty. This would be my competitive go-to headset right here. Because again, with all that high detail, if someone's around the corner, I can still hear them reloading their weapon or or whatever, maybe that slight footstep, you know? With something like the Xbox, you still got detail with these guys. You really did, like you can still hear stuff, but if a grenade went off or a score streak is going over you, it might overtake some of the other sounds around you with the Xbox One. Also going into like, say a story game. If you're just playing a basic story game, that's where I also went for the Xbox One. Because again, it was just a little more immersive a little bit more body in there i kind of just felt like i was in that world a little bit more now again don't take it like saying this is bad right i mean this sounded great over here it really did you get a little more natural sound right a little more detail so maybe you can take it as far as like what type of story game are you playing right maybe like um an open world game you might want more of that environment in detail natural sound of the world around you with this guy but say if you're playing something a little more intense and in your face maybe you're gonna want that fuller sound over here all right all right all right i apologize for going so deep into give me a second man i'm getting a little whew. Mm. good night man i went a little bit too on that sound right there but let me tell you what it was so different again even with my initial test of this headset when i was going back and forth to these guys even when i bust them out again for this review right here 
It was just so different. It was so weird how they were so different, but yet both so good. So that's why I wanted to really just break it to you guys and let you know they are quite different even no matter what you do. Talking about no matter what you do, I'm gonna dive over here to the mic test of both of them. And I'm gonna show you the software on the Xbox where you can actually adjust both of these headsets. You can also do this on PC as well. But again, talking Xbox, where you can really tweak and dabble the settings with both of these headsets. But first up, I almost forgot the winner of sound right here. Who's gonna take the cake for sound? This is seriously the hardest for me to pick right here. Like, I love this. Like, my traditional sound or headphones, Audio Technic ATHM 50X, and that's what I get with the Razer over here. These guys are a little bit more full, but lately I've been playing primarily racing games and story games. And I like the Xbox ones better for that, right? Like when I'm playing dirt, I, I wanna take off the Kyra's. I do, and I revert to the Xbox ones. So in my current situation, I'm gonna give the win to the Xbox for me, but again, break it down for you. Do you primarily play competitive games, open world, environment games? Then I think you're gonna wanna go with the Kyra's. Or heck, just if you like more highs. If you like your highs to be more prominent, you go Kyra's. If you want a more, more full, warmer sound, you go Xbox right there. Again, they both sound fantastic. Neither of them sound bad again. But again, it's going to really be, this one's going to be up to you. What do you want for my current situation? I'm going to take the Xbox. All right, so we are now using a microphone on the Razer Kyra Pro. While we're using this microphone, also I'm going to pull you into the Xbox and show you the software where you can really tweak this headset up which is super stinking awesome as you see right here we just jumped into the racer Cairo pro you can create a new profile we'll go into my one profile just so you guys can see what i use um as you can see first off audio equalizer right here and then you dive in here and really dabble with all of your settings now i want you to keep an eye on my custom setting here as we just talked about sound so you can see i got uh the low end the bass up to nine down to six and then four and a half right there uh, my headset batteries are low, <laughs> but anyways, as you see, then my highs peak up right there. Even with this headset, with this drawn up like this, it's still the highs are still prominent. Just just keep that in mind right there. So now, if you go over to the base, yeah, it does get a little bit more full, but this is my curve, and I really like it with this headset. But anyways, again, you can set it there, set your EQ to what you want. Microphone equalizer. Right now, we're on broadcast, and um. As you can see, this microphone is a little lower. I had to turn the volume up a little bit higher for this microphone to really catch there. If you pull this microphone closer to your mouth or further away, it'll really uh, be dominant. Again, if it's closer, louder, further away, lower. But you can tweak all this right here as well. Microphone settings, boost. Maybe we should put on boost. I don't know. How does this sound right now? Do I sound any louder? Maybe I should have done this in the first point. But anyways, we have that right there. That's microphone boost. Mic monitoring, again, so you can hear yourself, uh, so you're not yelling into the microphone. Lighting, as far as the RGB on the side of it, a couple of different effects, and pick your color, brightness. Then you have power saving mode whenever you take it off when you want to shut down. But anyways, this uh, software is so cool within this headset right here to be able to tweak it. And again, a lot of people ask, what are your settings? This is what I use on the Kyra Pro. So try that out, tweak it from there if you want and see how that goes. But anyways, let's go and plug up the Xbox One and see how that one sounds. All right, so now we're using the microphone on the Xbox wireless headset here. Again, we're gonna dive into the software here. It's gonna be the Xbox accessory app. And by the way, both of these apps are available on PC as well. So anyways, we're dive in here. We're gonna get to our headset, configure, and right off the bat, again, you're gonna see equalizer. Really cool. And just before you keep going, just take a look at the difference between this curve in the curve I had on the Cairo Pro, I had my bass matched up with the highs all the way up here, um, you know what I mean? And as you can see, I got my bass dropped on the Xbox and then bam, it shoots up to the highs right there. Even with this curve, there's still more bass in this headset. It's again, just that warmer, fuller sound. I also have bass boost off, but believe it or not, even with this curve, I come into bass boost, crank it up to one or two whenever I'm playing dirt with this curve and it's awesome. Even with a, a story game, single player game, really nice curve here. Dabble with some bass boost, from this curve and you're gonna have a lot of fun with it um, you got some presets in there as well but again really cool you can tweak the sound to how you want but again i just wanted to emphasize it is still a fuller sound uh even with being able to adjust there auto mute as you can see right there it says it will silence your mic if you're not talking into it how sensitive is it i have no way to really test that but cool feature i guess if it works you guys will have to let me know in the comments uh mute light i love this right on the front of the microphone right there it's uh it'll let you know when the mic is active when it's on the light will be lit uh, lit up so how high do you want that light to be 
And then you have mic monitoring. Again, how you hear yourself talking into the microphone so you're not hollering across the room like I probably am right now. Uh, you can set that right there. No way to adjust it on the headset. It's, again, it's in the software, but this is available on the Xbox and the PC. So again, really cool to have the software on both headsets. Uh, again, it's, it's game changing. Every headset should have this. I absolutely love it. All right, all right, I'm back. I had to get a refill and refill my coffee right there, guys. So sorry I'm getting so long-winded into this video here. There's just so much to talk about with these headsets, and that's really cool. Again, being a tech nerd myself, having two awesome products like this, having all these features, being able to beat up against each other, it's, it's stinking awesome time, you know? But talking about, number one, the mic test we just did right there. No beating around a bush. I mean, you guys... Could hear it for yourselves the Kyber Pro takes an easy win right and why that is it's not necessarily the microphone unit itself it's again the Kyber Pro has a traditional microphone it's right here in front of my mouth you pull it away it gets a little quieter pull it closer it's right in your face right there right great microphone over here talking about the Xbox one you almost get that earbud microphone right as you see it's over here it's not even in front of my mouth it's to the side of my mouth you know so again we're talking forward right and it's gonna be distant so it's like my microphone i know my mic studio is not the best but my microphone's right here right now right so it's just the same like if i step over here and start talking you're gonna get that distant sound it's the exact same thing you're getting with the xbox headset so that's a stinker i wish they would have made it a little bit longer i know why they kept it short so you can roll it in there and you really don't see it but I think that was a missed opportunity. Really cool how it has the mute light and everything and the active light so you can see whenever it's uh, actually on or off. I love that. That's great. A fantastic feature. But the microphone should have just been a pinch long. It should have made it that long and then put the microphone at the end. It would have been perfect, you know what I mean? Because the microphone's great. It sounds great, but it's at the wrong position. That's the biggest fault right there. Someone like me, I don't use a microphone when I game, right? All of my multiplayer games are on PC, and if I'm playing on PC, I have an external microphone. But again, still, I usually don't use one because I have a son that's usually gaming with me, and I don't want my son yelling in the background of my games, interrupting everyone else, you know? So for me, microphone doesn't matter. If microphone really matters to you, easy win, Kyra Pro for the microphone. But more importantly, backtracking a little bit here, talking about the software of both of these headsets on the Xbox. Right, being able to adjust it right there on your Xbox, that is stinking awesome. I love it, I really do. I wish every headset manufacturer would do that on console, right? PCs, you can download software, so they pretty much all have software on PC. And you can adjust it, some of them save to your headset and then you can bring it to your console and it'll be there, you know? But still, who wants to go to PC? Oh, let me adjust it for this game. Let me load this profile and then bring it over here, you know what I mean? I love that, and every headset company should do that. I know it costs money, probably get your app on there, or whatever, but it's something that needs to be done. And with both of these guys doing that right there, that is stinking awesome. Being able to adjust your microphone, your uh, EQs, anything like that, Kyra's the RGB, whatever. You know, that is so stinking cool. And hands down, they both get a high five on that one. All right, so now getting close to the conclusion of this comparison, we have one more difference right here, and which might be the biggest deciding factor for a lot of people. That is gonna be the price. The Razer Kyber Pros are coming in at $150, and the Xbox headset's coming at $99. So some of you out there might be like $50, whatever, but $50 is a good hunk of change right there, right? So again, talking about getting that comfort, that sound, those features packed into a $100 headset, Wow, I mean, this is setting the bar very high for other headsets coming out in the future. I'm serious. Like, no joke, we've seen the Turtle Beach 700 Gen 2s having these features, 150 bucks, right? SteelSeries Arctic 9X, they go up to 200 bucks with the same features as both of these. This set the bar at first coming around 150 with the 700 Gen 2s, right? Now, the Xbox One coming out at 100 bucks with these features packed in, Again, I'm telling you, no joke, it's setting a bar for other competitors out there, it really is. But both headsets are fantastic, they really are. $50 premium over here, let's say, is it worth that $50 premium? I don't see where it justifies the $50 difference unless you're really driven at that high resolution or the, uh, the uh, Triforce drivers and then the higher sound, the high-pitched treble, you know? RGB, maybe that's the difference right there. Now, talking about the RGB, you can also get the Razer Kyras, not the Pros. There's no RGB, and then there's no Bluetooth, and they're $100. So it's kind of like 
okay, well, you're losing the Bluetooth. For me, I need the Bluetooth, right? I need it to sync up to my phone. So if I'm in a game, I'm locked into a game. I don't miss a call from my son's school or something. That is very important for me because I can get really sucked into a game, lose track of everything around me. Next, you know, I miss an important call or something, you know? So Bluetooth is a must for me. So that's why I can't go regular Kyra's. If you don't need Bluetooth, you don't care about it, 99 bucks for the regular Kyra is a great deal, you know? But I love these two packing the features right there. I personally would say, again, in my situation, the Xbox is gonna take the win because I'm playing more story games and racing games. If you're driven straight Fortnite, Call of Duty, um, PUBG, anything that's competitive like that, anything open world, Skyrim, something like that, that's where the Kyra Pros are gonna come in for you, you know? That's what I would personally say. Both of them are fantastic. Both of them are completely worth their money right there, you know what I mean? But I really think the Xbox One is setting the bar high. Now, one side note I wanna make here, um, I know the Xbox One's sold out pretty much everywhere and the scalpers are selling them on eBay for a ridiculous price. Don't support that. They're selling for like 200 bucks. I don't think, if 200 bucks, go get the 9X or something. You know, you're gonna get those features and you're still gonna get the, you know, a really sweet headset right there. I'd say get the Kyra Pros before you even support a scalper on eBay. You know what I mean? With that price, it's just ridiculous. But I think these are gonna come available everywhere. And I think it's an absolute fantastic buy at hundred bucks. And right now, that would be my win. Again, for my situation. Think about your situation. What games are you playing? You'll be able to break it down right there. But right now, I'm loving the Xbox One, and this is gonna take the cake for me. So anyways, thank you so much for sticking around for this very long-winded comparison right here. Again, I just, I love testing headsets, and I love peating two fantastic, amazing headsets against each other. It's so fun, and again, it just puts a smile on my face. I stink and love it. But please let me know down in the comments, which one are you using, or which one are you thinking about picking up, and why? Again, I just wanna talk headsets with you guys. Like, why would you pick the Kyra, or why would you pick the Xbox One? Which games are you playing, you know what I mean? I'm really curious right here, so please, let's spark that conversation right down below. But again, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this comparison right here. I hope I was able to help you out. And if I was, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for some many more tech videos. That was different than I usually do. Make sure to subscribe, and don't, oh geez, now I just jumbled it up. I'm a mess right now. Anyways, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.